So oddly enough, the review that I'm doing for an al for this album is actually by a band that was almost on my top 10 favorite bands of all time list. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Connor, aka The Music Fanatic here, coming to you guys with a review of an album. This review about this album was actually suggested by a user by the name of description or put in the comments if you suggest me for, to review this. But the album that I'm going to be reviewing today is the second official studio album by one of my favorite pop punk bands of all time and a band that was almost on my top 10 favorite band list of all time. That band is Blink-182 and the album is called Dude Ranch. So if I'm being 100% honest, if Blink-182 was actually on my list for top 10 favorite bands of all time or honorable mentions or if I was making a top 20 uh, favorite bands of all time, it would actually be number 11. Because I have been into Blink-182 ever since I was a little kid. I can remember listening to this album. Hearing songs off of Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. And listening to this album. When I was a kid, when this album came out in 1999. This is one of the first bands I ever listened to. All the Small Things was, was like pretty much my jam as a kid. And we bought this album the day it came out. This album is actually as old as the album is today. This is not a re- manufactured issue or anything this is the same album that i've had ever since the year 2003 and i've cherished it and loved it ever since and it's my favorite blink 182 album but we are not talking about an enema of the state we're not talking about the untitled or self-titled album i guess today we're going to be talking about their second um album which is pretty much in my opinion their most skate punk album and their most probably their most classic sounding pop punk album ever and that's the album dude ranch so early in blink 182's career they were kind of they kind of had a, uh, a genuinely a genuinely easy to understand formula. It's kind of like Green Day in their early years. I actually said that the bands are exactly almost alike because if you listen to like uh, Cheshire Cat and 1039 and if you listen to this album, Anchor Plunk, you will see, also 1039, you'll see a pretty much um, same difference and it's pretty much about girls heartbreak and the fa and dealing with the fact that you're growing up. So yeah, that's pretty much what the album is completely about, and that's what every single track is about. And as you know, I like to do song the albums track by track. So let's get started with track number one, which is called Pathetic. Now here's the thing. Usually beforehand, I look up the meanings of songs uh, by bands. Like I had to do that. I didn't have to do that with Nirvana because I already knew it, but I had to do that with the Metallica album, so I had to look up like the meanings behind songs. But when it comes to bands that are pop punk bands and bands that are pretty much put your own interpretation into it, um, bands like uh, my favorite band of all time, Green Day, and also Blink-182 and other bands, instead of doing a song meaning, I'm going to be doing a song interpretation for every single track. So the song Pathetic, here's the way I'm going to put the song. I see it as a couple who is not really they're still together and everything they may be broken up but pretty much it's all about um the girl is the girl calls the guy um pathetic and all that stuff and says like oh you're a dropout you're pathetic and stuff i don't want to be with a person who drops out of school and all that stuff and you know you're pathetic and all that i actually just side note right here i actually looked up the meaning behind this song turns out it's not about a couple it's about tom DeLong's mother when he dropped out of school he dropped out of college, but here's the thing. He was expelled from high school, and I'll get on to that with uh, a later song on this album. So yeah, the song Pathetic, um, it is a great opener to this because instead of like um, normal albums by bands, the thing that I've loved about the early career of Blink-182 is that the openings of their um, early albums like uh, Cheshire Cat, this album, and Enema of the State is that Blink-182 knows how to just get right into it. They're not a band that's gonna be that's gonna like uh oh we're gonna have like a softest a soft er sounding song or like an opening track and all that stuff for our opening for our album we're not gonna have like an intro track we're just gonna get right into it and that's what the song pathetic does and the thing about pop punk when it comes to blink 182 standards of pop punk is that um if they play really fast and all that stuff if the drums are blistering fast and the guitar um wrists and stuff are fast as well that doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that the singing is going to be fast and that's what's on this song you see this song rather than doing um the normal blink 192 thing which is tom or mark sings um the verse or the, uh, the verse of the chorus and then tom or mark sings the chorus or verse and it just goes back and forth instead they're just going back and forth like um 
Mark sings the first line, then Tom, and it just keeps going back and forth throughout the entire song, and I love the song so much. It's one of my favorite songs off the album, and one of my favorite opening tracks to any album ever. So, yeah, that's the song Pathetic. On to track two, which is called Voyeur, which is one of those, it's one of those Blink-182 songs. I'd say the difference between this joke, um, this joking around Blink-182 song and other songs by them that are just joking around songs is that this song is kind of 2 minutes and 43 seconds, while other songs like Happy Holidays You Bastard and um, Family Reunion and all that stuff are a little under a minute. This song is over th two and a half minutes, and this song, by the way, it's under two and a half minutes, but it is over two and a half minutes, never mind, I forgot, it goes to 60 for a minute. But yeah, this song is pretty much a song about a, about a stalker. Sounds creepy, but it's kind of executed a little well. And by that, I mean it's hilarious. So the song starts off, it's, uh, um, the instrumentation, it's, it's not really a fast sounding song, it kind of is in a way, but the song, I swear to God, in the beginning of the song, I forgot the lyrics at the beginning of this song, but it sounds like, oh, a guy and a girlfriend, but nope, <laughs> he's pretty much saying, He's a guy who has a, either a camera or binoculars, and he is spying on this girl through her window outside of a tree with his pants down doing what you'd imagine. And, he, and like in the chorus, it pretty much says, I've seen everything there is to be shown and all, that, and all that, so he's seen her naked on many occasions. And then a one joking part of the song, it says that her brother kicks his ass all the time, so obviously he knows that he knows that he's doing that, and he accidentally walked in on the wrong window because he said her dad's very big and I've never seen his face. So it's kind of just one of those joking around Blink-182 songs. You either love them or you hate them. I, for one, love them. It's not one of my favorite songs off the album, but it's still funny, so. Then track three, honestly, I think this is maybe one of my favorite Blink-182 songs of all time, if not my favorite Blink-182 song of all time, and that is the song Damn It, aka also, bleh. Damn it, also known as uh, This Is Growing Up, or just Growing Up. It's a song essentially about a breakup, pretty much like a fake relationship that Mark Hoppus wrote because of the song, to make the song and everything. And it has the infamous uh, opening guitar line, you know, -na 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 that. And then it builds up and gets into the song. And the song, um, it's really blister, it's a really fast song by Blink 182. It's an early pop punk song by Blink 182. And it's pretty much about like a breakup and all that stuff and talking about um, it's it's kind of executed well in the music video of the song. It's kind of like you broke you broke up with this person. Um, now you're hurt and all that stuff and you want them back, but they already have another boyfriend and everything. And pretty much you just face the facts that, well, this is growing up. Fuck it. I guess I got to just deal with this. This is growing up. That's pretty much what the song's about. It's about a breakup and then just moving on with your life because just grow up. And it's executed very well, and it just has that Blink-182-ness to it, where it's just one of my favorite Blink-182 songs. And I know that's kind of cliche to say, because it's one of the most popular songs by them, but for a good reason. Blink-182 is one of those bands where their so-called best song really is their best song. Track four is called Boring, and it's essentially what the title says. It's pretty much about a breakup between two people. Surprising, right? It's about a breakup between two people, and it's Tom DeLonge singing, and pretty much the vibe I'm getting from this song is that it's a song about, all right, so this person's breaking up with me, and they're using the same old, it's not it's not you, it's me, and oh, we're breaking up because of this, and we're breaking up because of that, and everything, and oh, I'm sorry if I hurt you, and all that stuff, or maybe it's about like, oh, you're an asshole, and all that stuff, and blah, 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 and the song, and this, wow, and the song is essentially pretty much about, wow, this is really boring, if you're gonna break up with me like this, why even bother, just, the same old breakup, it's really boring, and that's what the song's about. But the song is not boring. The song is quite well. Quite well, quite good. And it's probably one of my favorite songs off the album, if I'm being 100% honest. But then we got on to track five, which is, oddly enough, probably my favorite song off the whole album. Other than the fact that the title of the song is really goddamn weird. So this is kind of one of those songs by a band that is pretty much like... The title of the song has absolutely nothing to do with the actual song itself, but the song itself is pretty good. And that is the song Dick Lips, and it's track five, but it's honestly probably my favorite song off the entire album, and probably one of the best Blink-182 songs ever made, and their most underrated song ever made. I stand by that. 
And the song, in its interpretation, it can't really have an interpretation because it has a meaning behind it. The meaning behind the song is Tom DeLonge when uh, he got expelled from high school for being caught uh, either drinking or smoking. I think, it was, I think it was drinking. But he was caught drinking and he was kicked out of high school and his mom was pissed at him. Uh, his dad was pissed at him. His mom grounded him, all that stuff. He was wondering in the back of his mind, how can I blame this on one of my friends and all that and everything. And that's essentially what the song's about. And oh my God, even though it's one of my favorite songs by Blink-182, there is one thing that uh, this album does slightly suffer on when it comes to early Blink-182. It's an acquired taste, and I've acquired it after much listening. And that is um, pretty much if Tom DeLonge's singing voice was a fruit it'd be a grape because holy shit it has a lot of wine in it like that little pun by the way and even though this is my favorite song off the album holy mother of god it sound like people say like um later blink 182 like in the album neighborhoods a lot of people don't like it because they say oh it just sounds like blink like uh tom DeLong is whining the whole time it just sounds he's over exaggerated now while i agree with that and while i agree that well, he's not in the band anymore, but um, when he was in the band, when they performed live and all that stuff, holy mother of God, it was insufferable to listen to the guy. I almost saw them live. No, I'm just kidding. I never saw them live. They never came anywhere around Nebraska. But if I did, I probably would have been holding back just a tad bit and probably would have liked the concert just a little less because I would hear Tom DeLonge sing like this, y'all. Like the dude's from California. No one sounds like that in California for all I know. Unless you're just that much of a surfer. But I will say, in the early Blink-182, that's where they're kind of better at the at the whining sounding, vo sounding voice, because this is why I think it works. You see, in the early years of Blink-182, it was kind of like this. You listen to a Mark Hoppus song, because Mark Hoppus kind of seemed like the more grown-up guy, and Tom DeLonge just had the voice of a little kid. He, he sounded like a whiny teenager, and that's pretty much what he represented and all that stuff, and that's why most songs by Blink-182 in their early career, including this one, is good when it sounds like the whining teenager, because that's the vibe they're trying to give off, and that's the vibe that's given off in this song, a teenager that has been expelled from school, and just complaining to his parents like, oh, it wasn't my fault and all that stuff. So while it's kind of a sufferer because it's acquired taste, I do think it's a strength behind this album. We're only at track five. And there's like a lot of songs left to go. So the next song on the album is called Waggy. And this song, in my own um, personal interpretation, is I think about pretty much you, It's I think it's about a guy who has a crush on a girl, either that or it's about, you know, um, a guy who already is in, an, in a relationship and all that stuff. But I'm going to say it's about a guy who has a crush on a girl. So I think it's about a guy who has a crush on a girl, but then halfway through um, thinking about it, he realizes, that he, realizes, he realizes that she's quite not the one for him. And, like, they have differing opinions and all that stuff, or he's not the person that, she, that he thinks she was and all that stuff. Or she, whatever. Um, but, yeah, that's the vibe I get. And it has one of the funniest lines that Blink-182 ever wrote. It said, uh, maybe this, maybe that. That's not actually the lyrics, but then he said, I'll just jack off in my room until then. How much of a, like, like, how much of an epitome, epitome of guys who don't, who don't know if they're falling for a person or not does that actually explain and all that stuff? Maybe you like them, maybe you're not, and I'll just go jerk off. That's pretty much every guy ever. Now, while I don't think it's one of the strongest songs off the album, I do think that it's a pretty good song, and Waggy pretty much does get a thumbs up from me off this album. The next song on the album is called enthused this is another song that is up for interpretation in my own opinion because it's the song much like the song waggy can probably go one or two ways it can either be about a guy who's already in a relationship or a guy who's falling for a girl but then realizes that she's not the right one and pretty much the song is talking and the song and like the first few lines the only the song only has like three lines of actual uh lyrics by the way which i can't recite right now but pretty much the song is talking about like um it's just like the the same old story of um I really care for this person but she didn't care at all for me and all that stuff and if you have the same exact story I'll listen and I'm sorry for you and I'll try to act enthused enthused I think means like um intrigued and all that stuff when you hear someone and 
That's another song that's the epitome of every guy ever. You like this person, but she doesn't give a shit about you back, so you're just like, fuck it. <laughs> that's the whole vibe I get from this album, by the way. Most of the songs are like, oh, this person, that person, blah, 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 fuck it, whatever. That's what I love about early Blink-182. Most of their songs are just, fuck it. Now, the next song is not a crush interpretation, or it's not about a failed romance. It's a song about a failed romance, and oddly enough, they didn't really have time to name the song, because the song is called Untitled. Not the weird song by Simple Plan, but the really good but the really good song by Blink-182. So one of the first lines of the song was, uh, I was so stupid, you needed time to grow and all that. So I think the song is actually about a guy and a girl who are together, break up and all that stuff, and then he realizes, oh, I was, I was stupid, and uh, you needed time to grow, and you needed time to grow into the relationship, but I wanted to take things too fast. And that's the vibe that I get from the song. And I think it's a pretty damn good song. I don't really know if it'd be one of my favorite songs off the album yet, but it's, in my opinion, still a pretty good song. The next song on the album is called Apple Shampoo. They got really weird titles for these songs, by the way. So oddly enough, the song Apple Shampoo, I think the meaning behind the song is kind of, in a way, a little sad. <laughs> it's kind of about like a guy and a girl who were just just there just just about to be in a relationship and all that stuff they were really really good friends they were just there but then the guy kind of just ruined it all and pretty much it made himself look like an ass and then it all ended in stuff and apparently and in part of the song it said uh i what was it in part of the song it said uh from we can't be this because we have such differing lives and all that stuff so it's like this guy wants to go that way but she wants to go that way and also part of the song has a pretty deep meaning um line to it it said uh, i feel like i'm walking on the set to the movie i'm not even in so that's another thing of like the differing lives and all that stuff it's like here's it's like the interpretation i get from that is like here this here's this giant blockbuster movie with explosions and awesomeness but you're supposed to be in a romance movie so that's a key thing for different lives and all that stuff. And the next song on the album, which is also Apple Shampoo is a good song. The next song on the album, which is track 10, and this song is called Emo. Interesting. But you see, children, I don't think kids watch this, um, the song Emo is actually, in my own interpretation, not a song that's about a person who is emo. It's about a guy who looks in on a relationship with two people. Maybe he's friends with the girl or maybe he likes the girl and all that stuff. And he sees that the current relationship she's in right now is absolutely fucking terrible. And it's like um, pretty much maybe an abusive relationship. Like maybe even part of the song is that uh, I don't care. He is such a dick. He treats you like you are a stupid whore and all that. And then it's pretty much a song about um, like... The guy who's looking in on an abusive relationship and stuff and he's saying hey you shouldn't be with this guy it's like oh no i love it. it's like the age old thing of you shouldn't be with a guy who's a dick oh but no he loves me and stuff which i think is what the meaning of the song is uh um she's she's sleeping on the floor um because she fell right off the bed so it's pretty much it's pretty much saying if she wants to be in this abusive relationship i guess just let her but she's better off with someone else so yeah, the, the line, uh, she's better off sleeping on the floor because she fell right off the bed is pretty much saying um, she's better off being in this abusive relationship because he, she doesn't see any other option for some reason. And that's what the song Emo is pretty much about. The next song is another one of my favorite Blink-182 songs of all time. The song is called Josie. Also better known as Everything is Going to Be Fine. Now this is probably the happiest song off the entire album. Every other song on this on this uh, album, if it was sung by another band, if it was sung like like by a band called like by a band like Brand New or like Modern Baseball and all that stuff, you notice a pattern with those two bands. If this song was sung by an emo band, if other songs were sung by an emo band, they'd sound like an emo song. But seeing how it's by Blink One Eighty Two and has that pop punk vibe behind it, you can't call it emo. But the song Josie is actually a song that's about a guy who just loves the shit out of his girlfriend, just loves the shit out of his girlfriend. He's like the first line of the song. Yeah, my girlfriend brings me home when I'm too drunk to drive and all that stuff It's like you have the absolute coolest girlfriend in the entire world and she is awesome That's what the song is essentially about and I don't know why I love the song to death because of that for some reason because it just It's like the ultimate love song by Blink-182 hidden behind the fact that it's like they're one of their fastest and most pop-punk sounding songs ever 
But yeah, most most uh, Blink-182 songs are about I was in a relationship with someone, now it's over, and I'm sad about it, but oh well, life goes on. This song is, I'm in a relationship with someone, and this person is fucking awesome. That is pretty much what the song's about, and it's probably my like second or first favorite song off the entire album. I like the song a lot. The next song has to do something with Star Wars. Yay. And the story behind this song, called A New Hope, which is the name of the first Star Wars movie, no, it's not. The name of the first Star Wars movie is Star Wars. But um, the song, the story behind um, A New Hope is pretty much um, episode one was um, going to be released in two years. And Blink-182 were huge fans of Star Wars. So they were really, really excited for it and everything. So they wrote a song dedicated to Star Wars. It's pretty much a love song to Princess Leia. That is obvious. And like, it's like saying, I travel through um, the thing, the places on Tatooine and all that stuff. It's like, Princess Leia, where are you tonight? It's a love song to Princess Leia. Blink-182. Then we get right back into the mix of things with the song that's kind of like the song Voyeur and the song is called Degenerate. It's kind of just a song about a guy who's a degenerate and stuff and pretty much the first line of the song is uh, about a guy who's going streaking and all that stuff and it's pretty much he gets arrested and he <laughs> meets a guy in prison named Bend Over. Ben Dover or whatever but yeah the song is pretty much just about a guy who's a degenerate and a guy who does stupid things for the stupidness of it but maybe the song is talking about the guy who's gone through all these breakups and all that stuff and he just goes fucking crazy maybe I don't know but yeah uh it's a damn good song I think you should listen to it um if you're into that kind of stuff and if you want to just listen to a funny little song by Blink-182 this whole album is worth listening to by the way I just I recommend this whole album then the next song on the album which is track 14 the song is called Lemmings so in my own interpretation the song in Lemmings is about being an adult and having like a wife and kids and all that stuff but then remembering back to the good old days and stuff and remembering back to maybe like an old girlfriend you had or maybe the person in the future is divorced and stuff and thinking back to like the old girlfriend they had or maybe your ex-wife or something like that remembering back to when you were like teen stupid teenagers and stuff remembering like talking about all the bands you loved and all the bands that you hated and like going and going back and looking at like all the places like the skate spots that you that you used to go into and all that stuff and i think the line in the song that sells the whole song is is it too much to ask for for it to work out this time it's pretty much talking about everything's been fucked up in my life. Can I finally just settle down and finally get something that works out for me? And I think it's, you know, the weird thing about Blink-182 is that they write little pop punk songs and all that stuff. But if you look really deep into the songs, they have really kind of beautiful meanings. And that's one. And that is kind of this song. But it's a fast pace. It's not really a fast pace. It's kind of just a pop punk song by Blink-182. So it's looked over past. Then finally, we get tr to track 15, which is one of my all-time favorite songs off this album. The song is called I'm Sorry. And I think the interpretation on this song is exactly what the song sounds like. It's an apology song. But the, so the apology song is not to anyone in general. It's about the guy who's been telling us all these stories throughout the songs. The guy who... The, the, Explaining it to the guy who dropped out of high school, dropped out of college, got expelled from school, had all these breakups and all that stuff. A guy who had a perfect relationship but then ended it. A girl who has an abusive relationship but won't get out of it. It's a song saying, I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry, but you know, things will work out better for you. Things get better. It's pretty much a song saying, I feel sorry for you, but you know, times are gonna get better and all that stuff, and you're not life's not gonna suck all the time. So I really like it because of that. So yeah. Those are the tracks off this album. Let's talk about other things about this album. So I think one of my all-time favorite things off this album, all-time favorite things, one of my favorite things off this album is the early Blink-182 down-to-the-bone um, instrumentation on this album. Because because Tom DeLonge plays the hell out of the fucking guitar on this album. Well, in the three-chord way you can play it in pop punk. Mark Hoppus is great as always on bass. And Scott Rayner, oh my god, the guy is almost as good as uh, Travis Barker, but Travis Barker's one of the best drummers in the entire world, so. But the thing about early Blink-182 is that they didn't have to be all extravagant, and they, it, like their drum uh, tracks didn't have to be all extravagant, and you, it's really hard to figure them out and all that stuff, and trying to learn how to play a song by Blink-182 wasn't supposed to be a homework assignment. It was just fast-paced pop punk, mu pop punk music made, made by a band that's from California, and that's pretty much what Scott Rayner thought when he was in the band, and before he got fired from the band, that's what he thought, and then Travis Barker came in and 
He's a fucking amazing drummer, but Jesus Christ, I can't figure out some of his songs. I swear to God, sometimes when Travis Barker's playing a song, it sounds like two drum sets are going off at the same time. And that's pretty fucking awesome, honestly. So, before you say anything, yes, I'm aware it's a different shot, and it's a different vid it's a different room, and I'm wearing a different shirt right now and everything, but um, I was halfway through editing this video, and I realized I forgot to say something. Um, I usually do, like, the top half favorite songs off of an album that I review. So, top half favorite songs off of Dude Ranch by Blink-182 in no particular order. So, since this album has 15 tracks, I'm going to be picking off my top 7 favorite tracks off this album in no particular order. It'd probably go Pathetic, Damn It, Dick Lips, Emo, Josie, A New Hope, and I'm Sorry. So, that's my top half favorite songs off the album. Another thing I love off this album is, honestly, the songwriting, behind the songwriting, um, the songs themselves, and just the overall... Um, the overall theme of growing up and realizing that life's gonna get better and that's pretty much the theme behind the album oddly enough that's the theme behind an album that has a front cover that looks like this weird huh so yeah as I just stated the front cover of this album says it it's this it says sorry I know the camera's facing this way um, it says Blink-182 it has Dude Ranch and then it has a buffalo with his balls hanging out. For an album that has amazing songwriting, that has great pop punk songwriting and all that stuff, and when you look into it, really deep meaning songs, quite the front cover. But then again, it's Blink-182, what do you really expect? They have a song, they have an album called Enema of the State. And another album called Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. Blink-182. Yeah, also, if, if you look at the back cover of this album, you see the guys from the band. You got Mark, Tom, and Scott. This way is what you do to see the tracks off the album. And there's 15 tracks of this album, if you couldn't tell from the track review. Um, open it up right here, and we get to see the front cover, which looks like a bunch of bullets that are in, like, a an old-time gun and all that stuff. And they all say Blink-182 Dude Ranch on it. And then as Blink-182 would follow... By the way, um, it says, um, welcome, fr greetings from the Blink-182 Dude Ranch, it says that, and open it up like this, and see a bunch of uh, silly pictures of Blink-182 that look like cowboys, and then all the lyrics, if you can read it correctly. So that's the inside of the album. I don't know why that's part of the review, but I guess I just like showing it. So an earnest and honest rating on this album, um, other than the fact that I will say the only drawbacks drawbacks to this album are sometimes Tom DeLonge's voice can get a little too exaggerated on the whining. Um, sometimes uh, it seems like the song's going to build up to something awesome and then just happens like that. Uh, some of the songs um, are just... Kind of, some songs kind of go on for a, just a tad bit too long. Like I feel this, I feel like the song "Waggy" could have been just like thirty seconds shorter. And honestly, that's pretty much all the complaints that I had. All the complaints that I have about the album. And yeah, honest, earnest rating behind this album, uh, probably a solid eight and a half out of ten. And that's my honest review for Blink One Eighty Two's Dude Ranch. And if you guys want me to review more Blink One Eighty Two albums, because I might. Uh, leave that in the description below. Speaking of Blink-182, by the way. So this is just me showing off something because I feel like showing it off, but Christmas was a few days ago, and I got money for Christmas, and I bought this shirt. Don't judge me, I bought it from Hot Topic, but it, yeah, so I bought a Blink-182 shirt. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's my review for Blink-182's Dude Ranch. Eight and a half out of ten. If you guys enjoyed this video, Hit that like button in the comment section below. Leave me album suggestion, album review suggestions and stuff. And that's pretty much it. Uh, three, two, one. I'm done. Subscribe. Goodbye.